I'm Elliot Kleinberg, and this is Something Went Horribly Wrong, a blog about bad writing and how to fix it. Segment 32, Foreign Phrases and Images. On June 26, 1963, President John F. Kennedy electrified residents of West Berlin with a speech outlining the West's solidarity with nations trapped by the Soviet Union. All free men, wherever they may live, he said, are citizens of Berlin, and therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Now, JFK also made a pretty big goof. He should have said, Ich bin Berliner. In German, a word becomes an adjective with the addition of er on the end. Thus, Berliner means of Berlin, making ein Berliner redundant. It gets worse. There's a pastry called the Berliner. It's like a jelly donut. So Kennedy said, I'm a Berliner, like I I'm a pastry. Imagine if Kennedy had addressed an audience in Copenhagen, and instead of saying, I am Danish, he had said, I am a Danish. You get the idea. Now, History.com argues that Kennedy was okay. It says Germans didn't call the pastry a Berliner, so everyone knew what JFK meant. Either way, the story is a cautionary tale about using foreign phrases. There are nuances to translation. Handle with care. Make sure you have them right. Google Translate usually does the trick, but not always. Now, goofs can be about more than just words. There's a difference between the terms Hispanic and Latin. Hispanic refers to people who speak Spanish or whose ancestors spoke Spanish. That includes Spain, the mother country in Europe. Latin, Latino, Latina, Latinx refers to people who are from Latin America or whose ancestors are. Not all of them speak Spanish. Just go to Rio de Janeiro and you'll see. And we all know the TV comedy I Love Lucy was historic in many ways. One of them was the idea of a woman with a Hispanic husband with a less than perfect command of English and a thick foreign accent. In that regard, Lucy was groundbreaking. But the writers made a mess of things in an episode called Be a Pal. Lucy decides Ricky is homesick for his native Cuba. Ricky comes home one day to the apartment to find a burrow, a man asleep in a sombrero, and the apartment festooned with hanging colored blankets and other accoutrements. They are stereotypes not of Cuba, but of Mexico. Later, Lucy emerges as the iconic singer Carmen Miranda, she of the fruit-laden hat. But Carmen Miranda was from Brazil, and the song Mame Yo Quiero is not in Spanish, but Brazilian Portuguese. Look, we live in South Florida. Portuguese is not Spanish. This was the second I Love Lucy episode to air. It seems surprising Desi would allow this, since he obviously knew better. It being the politically correct 1950s, the show's writers could get away with such tone deafness. Not today. Now, on the subject, Hispanic names are a minefield. Many people in Hispanic cultures use their last name followed by their mother's family name. For example, Nicaraguan leader Daniel Ortega is Daniel Ortega de Saavedra. But his last name's Ortega, and that's what you would use on a second reference. In olden times, members of royalty would add to their surnames the region that they ruled. And that's how everyone mistakenly writes the first name of Juan Ponce de Leon as Ponce and his last name as de Leon. His name is Juan Ponce, that's how you pronounce it, and his family ruled the Duchy of Leon, Juan Ponce de Leon. And then there's this fun exercise. Dear Principal, this morning, my daughter came home to say her teacher was discussing how Americans use foreign phrases, phrases without even knowing it. What kind of chutzpah is this? Who the heck is this prima donna principal? Does she think she has carte blanche? And in kindergarten, how do I know she's even bona fide? I don't need her going on ad nauseum about this. And en masse to the class, no less? Don't think I am accepting this as a fait accompli. It's caveat emptor as you know, and I'm not going to let this faux pas pass. If that's your school's modus operandi, you might just find yourself persona non grata. 
And don't forget, you're not doing this pro bono. Everything has a quid pro quo, and I'm not, and I'm not going to accept the status quo on this. <laughs> and I'm not just being macho. Next time, elements of style. I'm Elliot Kleinberg. Visit www.ekfla.com. That's ekfla.com.